Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I got this result. This result is in a fem is in the fem workbench, and basically this video is uh, you know a tutorial on how to get your first result um, because I found it was a little bit difficult in the fem workbench to get a result, and I've <laughs> I've tried to record this video a number of times, and every time I come back, I had you know I had some other issue. Um, and that might be largely in part to, uh, I have no idea what I'm doing in FEM, and this is strictly about getting a result in the FEM workbench. Um, I find it, the whole thing fascinating, and I think even with someone with very little understanding of it, uh, things like this are an obvious tell of, of that there's, you know, of what the forces and stressors are. And you can ignore that bird in the background, it's just a clock that makes the bird noise every on the top of the hour. Um, so basically, you know, what we have here is we have two types of constraints. This is a force constraint pushing, you know, in this vector, and this is a fixed constraint down here uh, holding the bottom, and these are the stresses as a result. So I'm going to try to show you how I got to this result, um, and I'm going to be uh, focused just on, on this object, and we'll start out by making that object, and the reason I'm going to do that is because it's a little bit of a, a plug for my workbench. Um, that, that, you know, <laughs> it's not a great workbench, but it's, it's fun. Um, I find that repetitive shapes, uh, you know, these are called sketcher shapes. I don't want a full part, but I often do various shapes over and over again. So this is a uh, workbench allows me to save off those shapes and get them recreated. And I try to create them in a way that's, you know, a little bit flexible. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to stick this in a part, um, and we'll just put this in a body and I'm going to stick it to the YZ plane and so that should get me yes so I um, I usually want it so that it's going to be visible when I set to the isometric view so let this let me change this to the XZ plane I think would be better uh, oops so what you do is you do change the support here and this is a, this is a sort of a newer way to do it um, click apply. Okay, so now when I now I, you know after I've been moving around and I hit this, it's going to give me a view that's most meaningful to me. So I'm going to pad this to a hundred, and then we'll make it symmetric to the plane. So that's you know very. Oops, let's make it fifty instead. It's a, it seems a little bit big. So the, you know there's no good, no rhyme or reason to this. Just what what is ever works. Now the reason I made it symmetric to the plane is that when I add the next sketch. I'm going to be able to do the same thing. I'm going to do the um, XZ plane, and this should get me on edge there. So now, you, now I'm I want this to be in the middle. So I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use at um, uh, the uh, what's this called again? Uh, external geometry constraint. So I'm just going to create a triangle here, and I'm you know selecting the uh, coincident constraint with each one of those endpoints, and that should be good. So now when I close this, I got my triangle, and I should be able to just pad this, and, oops, so it's not, uh, hide this. One of them didn't connect, oh, there it is. I thought I got it, but I didn't. So let's finish this real quick, and then we'll get on to the, uh, then we'll get on to the fem make it 10 that's good I'm gonna do symmetric so right it very easily without thinking too much it's centered so that's that's the kind of thing I like uh, a, a workflow that uh, centers you know uh, you know does work for you so let's go into fem now um, and so what we're gonna start with is every every fem needs an analysis container so I think you can do multiple ones per but I've had issues when I tried to do that um, so I, you know, I don't do it for now. And then every analysis needs a solver. So we're just going to add the calculus, calculus solver. And I think, oh, okay. So I added three <laughs> because it wasn't uh, expanded. I like to keep this hidden, but it, in this version, that pops up whenever there's an error. I'm not a big fan. Um, so the next thing I need to do is I need to add a material. So everyone needs a material and a solver. And I'm just going to do PLA plastic because that's the kind of thing I material I've been working with lately. 
and I'm just going to leave it all as the defaults for now because I don't understand any of this anyway. Um, <laughs> and then, so finally, we need to. The next thing we need to add is so this is all setup sort of stuff. The next thing we need to add is a mesh. So the only thing I have installed is G Mesh. And actually, this uh, reminds me of something. So I'll, I'll tell you in a second. So I'm going to hit apply. I think I need to select the shape first, though. Nope, it was already selected. So that's done. When you get this result, it's worked. If you get anything else here, it hasn't worked, and you should get the mesh on the object. Um, at some points, I wasn't able to do it from a shape, but it works for, for now. So <laughs> we'll just leave that there. So it hides the mesh by default, but you can bring it back. Um, a uh, couple of other things, uh, Calculix, you have to install the Calculix package and you also have to install Gmesh. So that's something you have to do before you even use uh, um, uh, the, FEMS, the FEM tool, the FEM workbench. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the constraints. So to add the constraints, I'm gonna just orient this the way I want it. The first one I'm gonna add is the fixed constraint and that's uh, by the lock here. So I'm gonna just click on it and it asks, it gives you a prompt. It says add the faces. So I'm gonna select the face I want and add it. And you see right away it's added the constraint. So that, that works out very well. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the uh, force constraint. That's this one right here. Create force, select the face, add it. And you'll notice it's going the wrong way in this one. So I'm just gonna hit reverse direction, click okay. So now I've got my, my constraints that I need um, so the next step is to actually run the analysis. So with the solver selected, you go to, let's see, where is it? And this is this is the kind of thing that, uh, that bugs me. There's an actual, um, or do I need something else? Let's see if I forgot something. Nope, so I need to run the analysis. So it used to be a cube, and I'm trying to figure out where, the, where it is again. I wonder if I can just do it from, uh, so when it runs the analysis, let me, <laughs> do I have to, nope, that's the GMS. So sometimes you have to have the things selected that are going to work on it. Hold on one second. Oh, okay. So um, it's, this is the, the icon to run the solver. Let's see if I can get it to pop up. Yeah. So that runs it for the selected, for the selected solver. So this is my solver and I'm going to just click run and it should give me an, a, Okay, I thought it would give me a dialogue, but so those are the results. So the next thing we can do is once, um, oh, and I think this is important. This is why I didn't get the results this time is, is the, the first time you run it, you have to do this. You have to do uh, change, you have to change the attributes and you have to do this run IMP file. It creates the file and then you have to click run calculus, calculix. So that must be done before you can actually rerun it. So the reason I was able to get a result without rerunning it, and I you know, surprised myself for a second, was because I had done it once. Um, now, now that I have the result, I can, I can view, view the effects. So if we go into this, uh, the visualize, we, we get this dialogue right here. And by default, it goes into, I think it by default, it goes into displacement magnitude. Now. And that's how we get our result. It's um, so it's not hard, but it's uh, not obvious um, unless you have an external resource to help you understand what you need to do. It may be easier if you're a fem person. I, you know, I, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, you know, one one other thing that this allows you to do is, and it doesn't work on this one, is um, if you have something that's going to deform, you can um, you can you can actually show the deformation with uh, with this slider here. So if this was like a long beam, it would show the beam bending. Um, I can't get it to do do it on this, but like if you do dupl displacement X, you'll actually see the uh, some some lines perhaps, let's see. Maybe, I think some of the lines might change. No, it's not doing it. But um, oh, I think I have to go ramp this way up. Well, anyway, no, I won't play with that. So you can, in, maybe in future videos, I'll, I'll experiment with that. I've gotten it to work with longer objects, but these shorter things, you know, I'm, I'm missing something. But that's pretty much it. If you want to learn more about my um, Sketcher Shapes Workbench, um, head over to, uh, you can go to my Patreon page. I'm going to put details there. 
and places where you can upload it. It is on Git, but I'm going to save that for the Patreon page because I'm trying to drive a little bit of traffic to that, I'll be honest. So if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe. And you, if you click the alarm bell, you're going to get notified better. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I enjoy doing these, and I enjoy having you as a viewer. Have a great day. Oh, okay. So um, it's this is the, the icon to run the solver. Let's see if I can get it to pop up. Yeah. So that runs it for the selected for the selected solver. So this is my solver, and I'm going to just click Run. And it should give me a... Uh, okay, I thought it would give me a dialog, but... So those are the results. So the next thing we can do is once, um, oh, and I think this is important. This is why I didn't get the results this time is, is the, the first time you run it, you have to do this. You have to do uh, change, you have to change the attributes and you have to do this run IMP file. It creates the file and then you have to click run calculus, calculix. So that must be done before you can actually rerun it. So the reason I was able to get a result without rerunning it, and I you know, surprised myself for a second, was because I had done it once. Um, now, now that I have the result, I can, I can view, view the effects. So if we go into this, uh, the visualize, we, we get this dialog right here. And by default, it goes into, I think it by default, it goes into displacement magnitude. Now, and that's how we get our result. It's, um, so it's not hard but it's uh, not obvious um, unless you have an external resource to help you understand what you need to do. It may be easier if you're a fem person. I, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you know, one, one other thing that this allows you to do is, and it doesn't work on this one, is um, if you have something that's going to deform, you can, um, you can, you can actually show the deformation with, uh, with this slider here. So if this was like a long beam, it would show the beam bending. Um, I can't get it to do do it on this, but like if you do dupla displacement X, you'll actually see the uh, some some lines. Perhaps let's see. Maybe I think some of the lines might change. No, it's not doing it. But um, oh, I think I have to go ramp this way up. Well, anyway, no, I won't play with that. So you can, and maybe in future videos, I'll, I'll experiment with that. I've gotten it to work with longer objects, but these shorter things, you know, I'm, I'm missing something. But that's pretty much it. If you want to learn more about my um, Sketcher Shapes Workbench, um, head over to, uh, you can go to my Patreon page. I'm going to put details there and places where you can upload it. It is on Git, but I'm going to save that for the Patreon page because I'm trying to drive a little bit of traffic to that, I'll be honest. So if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe. And you, if you click the alarm bell, you're going to get notified better. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I enjoy doing these, and I enjoy having you as a viewer. Have a great day.